On the software craftsmanship mailing list a short while ago, there was a discussion about different coding kata websites, and so I decided to check them out. One that I found really interesting is one called codersdojo.org, and uh, there's a really neat idea that they have here. You basically download and install a Ruby gem, and you use it to create a small project and then run one of their utilities whenever you're doing your kata, and it will uh, collect statistics and all of the diffs about the kata that you do and it will if you upload it it will create a little site that looks something like this which shows the final code that you ended up with it will show uh, some statistics about what you run how many moves you made what was the duration of each show a little bit about passing tests failing tests and such the other thing that you can do is you can kind of walk through and see each change that the uh, developer made as they were going through and do it and see the outcome. And so it's kind of neat. I thought it was a great idea, so I decided to give it a try. But what I was really worried about is this diff view is not quite as nice as seeing the actual code and hearing the commentary as it's taking place. So I decided to uh, both do this challenge and record it. And so here we go. I'm going to try to do this in a single pass. Let's hope it goes well. And um, as you can see, I'm starting with a completely empty directory. I'm going to run the Coders Dojo setup. It does support a whole host of languages and testing frameworks, so you'll have to check it out. I'm going to use Ruby and RSpec. And let's let it run. It's going to generate some uh, files for me. And here you can see is there are a few files. If you look at the README file, you'll see that it tells you that uh, there's a couple of scripts. Run your tests run once or run your tests in an endless loop. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with this. Let's take a look here at something first. One thing I did notice is the uh, run once file is a little dated. It wants to run spec, and our spec 2 has been out for quite a while. So there's really no need to run spec anymore. I did want to submit a patch for this, but I went up and saw someone's already done that. So hopefully that will get incorporated in soon. And here is the starter class that it gave me. So this is sort of my starting place. The thing I want to do is think a little bit about what I want to test. So many languages declare a lot of the base classes final or closed in one way or another, and it takes away our, our ability to be very expressive in the code that we write. In this case, I'm going to do a number to a Roman numeral kata, and if I wanted to do this uh, such that it feels good to me, I really want to be able to ask the number to convert itself. And so that's what I'm going to do. In Ruby, the fixNum class is the class that represents uh, integers. So that's a class I'm going to drive. And so this is our starting point. I'm going to go ahead and, and kick this off. And let's see where it takes me. And here we go. We're running. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all of that. Um, and get our first test there and as you can see it's failing let's get that to pass and we have our first working test and let's just keep going okay and another test self for fixed num is the actual number itself so as you can see that passes uh, this next test, I believe it will pass, but I'm going to go ahead and add it just for completeness, just to ensure, and it does. And 4 is failing. That's good. And we're passing. And... That's really, really ugly, the code that I just wrote. But it's not obvious to me what I need to do about it yet, so I think I'll let it set there for just a while. And 
and uh, I think this test is going to be pretty much the same. And we are passing. And at this point, I really have enough to let me see that I've got some pretty profound duplication. So I'm just going to start refactoring to get rid of that. So I've introduced a variable that, that holds that, and we're still green. So let's start to, I believe at this time, all three of these statements are duplications of each other. I'm just going to continue to massage them until I make them exactly the same as each other. Then I'll figure out how to uh, get rid of the duplication. Okay, one, I'm really going to need to loop through and adding the I character, so let's see what that might look like. And and now the fact is is that I do not want to change self. In fact, I should not change self because we don't want to just call to Roman and have it change the number that is there. Besides, I don't believe we can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce another variable and use that instead. So, And in order for this to work, I'm going to also have to subtract out uh, the the values for the previous if statements. And with that, I'm still green. Good. Last thing I want to do is just make them exactly the same. That's the same. Now these statements are identical and now I can start to think about how I want to get rid of them. And what I'm going to do is in externalize the data and uh, see what, uh, what that allows me to do with the, with the code itself. So we're good there. Oops. Are we good? Now we're good. Okay. And we're still good. And we're still good. So now we've gotten rid of all of that duplication. So let's write a few more tests and see where we go. Let's see if we're close or not. I think six should pass, but we'll go ahead and write it just to be absolutely sure. And it does. Let's see what happens with nine. And nine does not work. And so now I'm at a point where I believe I've got the finished algorithm. The only thing I need to do now is just continue to write some tests that will uh, drive out the remaining 
uh, the remaining uh, values for my mapping. So I'm just going to go ahead and move that down a little bit just to shorten some of the uh, some of the uh, movements that I have to make. And I'll refactor it or move it back up a little bit later. But let's run through all the, the changing conditions and see if I can't complete this quickly. Okay. And that one there is now passing. Good. Let's go up to 40. And we're passing again. 50. And we're moving right along 10 passing tests. Uh, 90 would be the next one. Um, XC, that's right. And 100. Okay, 400 is the next, and what is it, CD, and 500. We are just about done. 900. And the last one we need to do is 1,000. Okay, I'm going to do one more difficult one just to validate or just to verify that everything's all wired up real quickly. Let's try 2,999. That seems like a good good test. Let's see, M M C M uh, X C I X, and it works. Good. Last thing I need to do is I want to clean this up just a little bit. Let me go ahead and go up here and uh, put this in place. Get rid of this white space. And I believe we have our solution. So I'm going to go ahead and finish and I'm going to choose the uh, option to upload. And here it is. Okay. I believe that's it and here it is it's available for anyone to take a look at the kata is complete let's see how I did oops I must have talked too long on that one overall it looks pretty good about 13 seconds per move looks like we took about 9 minutes and 48 seconds to complete the kata wow number of modifications per move 2.7 that's probably not too bad, not too bad at all. I think we'll be happy with that. Uh, do take a look at this. Don't be afraid to do your own. Share the links so that others can take a look at it and give you feedback.
I'm cheesy. And I not only improve this message, but I live it. Do you?